Hello my friends, welcome to a new Photoshop tutorial. Today I will show you how to remove green screen in Photoshop using channels and calculations. I used this uh, image to practice and this is the result that I got. Obviously uh, this is really simple so for this tutorial I will use a more complex image where we have uh, hair because it's a lot more difficult to remove and for an image like this I wouldn't even use uh, the technique that I will show you today. I would just use the quick selection tool maybe or the um, or the color uh, range selection method. But uh, for this tutorial I will show you a more advanced technique which will uh, work for more complex images. So I hope you will like it. Okay, let's open our image on the website on psdbox.com you will find the links for these images and uh, on the video description you will find the link that will take you there so this is the image that we will use for for our tutorial this image it's like the perfect um, situation because the chroma is uh, perfect and I think it was added digitally or something because normally you would get different tones different shades uh, on your green screen uh, but for this tutorial it will work and the technique is the same so I will use this image and just to have something to work with I found this image this background you can use anything you want uh, I just used this one because I liked it and I will make it bigger because I will also uh, blur it so I'm gonna go to blur blur gallery and choose field blur, uh, blur and I'm gonna add let's say like yeah 15 pixels is okay well, uh, this is the technique that I'm going to show you. Um, there are multiple ways of doing this. You can work with, uh, um, with the selection method, with the uh, color range if you want, and then use, um, use a layer, um, an adjustment layer to remove the green from the hair. But uh, I'm going to use another technique. I'm going to go to channels. And as I said, this is the perfect situation because the chroma is perfect and on the green channel it's pitch black. So you can sample the image and you can see it's black. Normally um, you would have something really dark but not completely black, which is okay. Uh, but for this image, as I said, this is the perfect situation. So um, for a green screen like this, we will work with red and green to remove it. If you use, if you have a blue screen, for example, you should use other uh, other tones. Uh, you select the black, the black one, and the the brightest one. In this case, the black uh, one is the red, and the green is the brightest one. So I'm gonna create a copy of the black one. In this case, my red channel. Drag it on top of the new layer, a new um, channel layer there, and this will create a copy of it. Now I'm gonna go to Image and choose Calculations. And here, uh, what we need to do is, uh, you can see we have source 1 and source 2, and then a blend mode. Basically what you do with this is just take two channels and blend them. You can even blend channels from different images, so you ha if you have multiple documents open, you can do that. But uh, think of it like, for example, if you take the red and the green channel and you put, in, and you put them on, a, on the layer tab, on the layers uh, palette, uh, with the same uh, black and white uh, tones that you have here, um, it's just, it's the same uh, as taking them there and using a multiple um, and using a blend mode. So basically, what we're doing here is taking two channels and blending them with the, one of the blend modes that we have here, and we also have the invert um, option here. So on source one, we'll, we will choose the red copy, which uh, I just created. And on source 2, as I said, I will use the green channel because it's the brightest one. And now you can try blend modes. I found that overlay works really well. And also um, inverting this will work even better. So you could invert either the red copy if you have if you want to have a white background or you can invert the green copy. Not uh, It doesn't work the same, so it's not the same. Uh, it's not just the inverted image because uh, it depends on the tones that you have on your green screen. If your green screen is not really completely black, um, 
Maybe it's better if you invert the red copy instead of the green, but that's just a matter of trying and see which one looks better. And of course you can also try other blend modes and try the invert settings and see which one works better. But for this case, I, uh, I found that inverting the green uh, works better. Okay, once we get here, what I wanna do is press Control Command L. This will open my levels and I just wanna increase this slightly. And here the histogram will tell you if you have, you can see this big spike here tells me that we have a lot of blacks, complete black. But if I have some graphics um, here, some spikes here, uh, I would have to move this to make them really, uh, really black. So in this case, I don't need to move this. I just want to increase this because this image should be black and uh, just black and white, pure black and white. So we should have no spikes here. We just have... We just need two spikes, one here and one here on the other side, on the right side for the highlights. So I'm going to do this, click OK. And here on the hair, uh, we have to uh, refine that, but we will do that after we've, we're done with the masking. Next, I'm going to get the brush tool and I'm going to set the blend mode to overlay. Um, for this, you need your, black, your background to be complete, completely black because otherwise it will not work. Now I'm gonna paint with white, and I'm gonna paint over it. And you can see I don't I don't even have to worry about the edges, and that's as I said because the black uh, the background is uh, pure black. And if you paint with white on with the overlay blend mode over something that is completely black, nothing happens. So I'm gonna paint with this like that. Great. Now the edges will not gonna be perfect, but we're gonna fix them uh, after we're done with this. Okay, you can start to see artifacts around there and you can fix that with the levels a bit. And now I'm going to change the blend mode back to normal because some areas even uh, some areas are too black and the blend mode will not work on them. So on some areas you have to paint with the normal blend mode on your brush. I'm doing it fairly quick here because I don't want to spend too much time. I just wanted to show the technique. So I'm not going to go into really precise paintings here. Okay. Now we have the selection of the man. And now if I control click on this alpha um, alpha one thumbnail, it will select my background. This is like a layer mask now. Now I'll select the RGB again. Go to layers. And with the layer of my uh, player here, I'm going to click the layer mask icon. And this will hide the background. Now, we have problems here um, on the edges especially and here on the hair as well. Now, we can do this, um, I would do it in two steps. First, get rid of the green of the hair and then uh, taking care of the edges. In order to take care of the green around the hair here without losing too much detail, you can use two things. First one is use the refine edge, so I'm going to right click on the layer mask and choose select and mask or refine edge whatever you have on Photoshop CC 2017 they changed the name of it and also they changed a bit um, the interface here and all you need to do for the hair to remove this green is choose decontaminate colors and this will do um, a good job if you increase the feather but this will make you lose detail here so it's not my favorite um, it's not my favorite uh, way of doing it. You can also just shift the edge a bit and then just slightly increase the contrast and probably the feather just a bit. It's good, but it's not my favorite. Uh, another thing you can do, uh, which works pretty well, is... Uh, actually, I'm going to show you three ways of doing it. Uh, you can create a hue saturation, for example, and just sample a color from here using this hand icon. Just... Uh, click there to sample the color and just desaturate this for example or choose colorize and make sure you get the color of the hair more or less something like that more unsaturated and probably a bit darker now invert the layer mask and with the brush just paint with white with a soft brush and um, make sure you clip this to the layer to the player layer of course and just paint like that. It's not perfect, but we can reopen the 
like that. We can reopen this uh, adjustment layer. If you zoom in 100%, you can see it's pretty close. A bit more saturated, and this is one way of doing it. You can see it looks pretty nice, but we still have this area here. So once you're done with the hair, I suggest you, you either create a copy of this to have it there and then apply the layer mask on this one. But it's it's a bit too um, too much work, I, I think. And then uh, just select and merge these two photos and then work on the separate, on the, this one with the select and mask. Check the decontaminate colors. Increase the contrast, the feather a bit and shift the edge slightly. And you can see how the edges, especially here on the on the elbow, as you can see, if I increase the too much feather there, shift the edge a bit and well, probably a bit more and more contrast. You can see the edges are gone now here. Um, if you see the original, take a look over here on the left side, on the left arm, and also here on the on the well, also here on his left arm as well. Take a look. Just by activating decontaminate colors and click OK and then reactivate the one here on top and you have to erase the ed the edges of this one over here that's too much work I think but that technique on the hair works really well another way of uh, another way the third way of doing it is using the um, replace uh, colors what I would do again here on the hair you have to work on, on two steps there's no other way so um, what I would do is I would um, s select the lasso tool. This works really well if you have color casts. For example, here, if this would be would have a green tone on it, you could use this technique. Works really well. Um, what I would do is here on the hair, I would select the layer, not the layer mask. Uh, have the feather to about ten pixels, just to have a uh, transition uh, about there. Just to have some transition on my, on my selection, I would select the hair like this, really close to the area that I want to remove the color of. And now I would go to Image, Adjustments, and choose Replace Color. And all you need to do here is sample the color you want to replace. In this case, I want to replace this green. And you can see it creates this white area here, this white selection. This means that the changes that I do here, that I make here, will affect only this area that is white. If you increase the fuzziness, you include more areas here. But remember that we are restricting this, even though you see the selection here, we, we are restricting this with this selection which is feathered. So I can increase this just to have a better transition. And now I could click here, and now I have the color that I want to change sampled here. And I want to um, I want to replace it with the color that I have here. So I'm gonna click there and pick a color. And Photoshop will try to match this color um, and change it. So I'll probably increase the fuzziness even more. Not working as well as I expected. Probably I should include more colors in my selection by pressing the Shift key. Okay, now it looks a bit better. Okay, something like that. It does a really weird color cast on, on that. But anyways, I'm going to click OK. And you can see I changed it. I think with the hue saturation, the technique is better. It works a bit better, at least there on the hair. But on areas like, um, like the body, for example, if you have color cast, this works really well because the color is not as strong as here. So you could... Um, here in this case, for example, I'm going to show you the example here. You can see the color cast over here and also over here and also right here on the on the shirt. So uh, and also here on this uh, side over there. So what you could do is just simply uh, I'm going to show you how it works on this image. Select the area that you want to change. Remember, it's feather. I have 10 pixels of feather and go to image adjustment. Um, replace color. And I would sample this tone over there. And here, because the color is not as strong, I could just simply desaturate it. Or change the tone to something more bluish. Click OK. I'm going to show you the before and after. Take a look at this area over here. I hope you can see it. Before and after. See the green cast over there? 
it's gone. So uh, this technique is better if you want to remove casts, color casts from areas on your body. And for the hair, as I showed you here, maybe it's better if you use the fuse the, the adjustment layer, the hue saturation adjustment layer, and match the color of the hair. And then here for the for the easy uh, for the easy uh, edges, use the uh, use the refine edge shift the edge a bit, increase the feather slightly and increase the contrast and check decontaminate colors and it's gone. But as I said, you have to do, this on, to do this on two steps because you will lose detail on the hair over there. So uh, that's all for, uh, for today. I hope you liked this uh, green screen removing tutorial. As you can see, it's, it's a bit of a mix of different techniques, but it works pretty well. And if, you have, if you're patient, you can get really good results. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you next time.